You're listening to The World at Eight with Lynn Mozart. <laughs> Nationalist News. Highlights of the news today, Wednesday, the 9th of May. Senior British National Party official arrested outside court in Liverpool. Muslim grooming gang jailed for 77 years between them. Hate cleric appeal is today in Strasbourg. Euro under threat again with Greek markets. Double agent left Yemen with a bomb and delivered it to the CIA. Kofi Annan has concerns over Syria. Thought for the day, the Muslim gang and the media. Finally, a Europod trumps all. UK news, breaking news. Clive Jefferson was arrested outside court in Liverpool today, apparently for distributing leaflets. He has now been released. Mr Jefferson has been charged with Section 17 of the Public Order Offence, leafleting in a non-designated area. He will appear in court on the 31st of May. Nine members of a Muslim paedophile grooming gang were sentenced in Liverpool today to a total of 77 years between them. Eight of them are named as Kabir Hassan, 25, Abdul Aziz, 41, Abdul Rauf, 43, Mohammed Sajid, 35, Adil Khan, 42, Abdul Qaim, 44, Mohammed Amin, 45, and Hamid Safi, 22. One man who apparently cannot be named for legal reasons is 59. This particular piece of filth, named as the ringleader, harangued the court and asked why there were no ethnic minorities on the journey, amidst his showmanship of stripping and yelling abuse at the judge. He was quoted as saying, I won't stand trial with the BNP jury. One World Date reporter commented, it was disgusting to see a Labour Party cronies backing these Muslim paedophiles after they had abused children who were of the same nationality and race as their own. Labour still has Harriet Harman, who was involved in all sorts of paedophile help groups, wanting to decriminalise incest, lower the age of consent and water down child porn laws. He added, with the Labour 25 convicted paedophiles, there are nine more connections with Labour and child abuse in the north of England. Harriet Harman's uncle was Lord Longford, the only person on the entire planet who tried to free paedophile Myra Hindley. Abu Qatar, the Muslim preacher who spat hate towards anything British and Christian, but was happy to go to the post office and claim his British benefits, could hopefully be given the big boot he deserves. A panel of five judges will hold talks on whether the case should be heard by the Grand Chamber of the European Court of Human Rights in Strasbourg. Very few Grand Chamber appeals are successful, but if the appeal is granted, Qatar 51 is likely to apply to a senior immigration judge for bail and could be freed from Belmarsh High Security Jail within weeks. We have to remember these are the human rights judges who make judgments on people they do not know and do not have in their own countries. Euro news. The Euro is under threat again in Eastern markets. The worry for the Euro is that Asian countries are watching the movements of the Greeks. Some advisers have said that the situation in Greece could produce another debt crisis. The media is making a big deal out of the so-called neo-Nazi Golden Dawn popularity. To clear some points for them, Golden Dawn is not neo-Nazi, they are not German. And the so-called swastika is in fact the Greek key. Talk about a skittish and ill-informed media. The new President of France, Françoise Hollande, is under increasing pressure to seal the French attitude towards austerity measures. Without the French input, the Germans say that their enforced austerity measures are likely to fall apart. World News Reports in the US stated that the Al-Qaeda bomber who was sent on a mission to kill innocent people on an American airline turned out to be a Saudi double agent, sent in to infiltrate the Islamic terror group. The terror group, which was Yemeni-based, was infiltrated by the intelligence agency. In an apparent intelligence coup, the agent left Yemen with the device and delivered it to the CIA. Kofi Annan, the UN official, has spoken openly about the recent crisis in Syria. He explained that the peace process must succeed in order to stop a full-scale war in the region. Thought for the day. Muslim grooming and the media. Well, I thought I could not get any angrier, and yet here I am with smoke coming out of my ears. The reason? 
The headline in the mail today was, Why did no one listen to teenage victim of sex scam? The reason being because they were Muslim and a so-called minority, and everyone knows you must not complain about them. The two writers in the mail were, of course, Asian. We must not have anyone who is not Asian on an Asian problem. It isn't an Asian problem. It is our problem, with a high percentage of Muslims as perpetrators. The truth is even more unpalatable and will never be heard on the media. Nick Griffin complained to the authorities in one northern town over ten years ago that this practice was becoming national and he was accused of racism and of being an Islamophobe. I attended a conference given by CROP, which stands for the Coalition for the Removal of Pimping, and the elephant in the room was the Muslim aspect of this particular form of grooming. It was brushed over. Andrew Norfolk, a speaker from the Times, gave everyone a feel-good moment on the timing of this expose. Apparently eight years ago, he knew all about it from a Labour MP from Keithley, but knew it was a sensitive subject and gave his reason as to why he did not jump on the man wagon, as indeed he has now, and I quote, And I know why I did nothing. It was because I sensed the saliva dribbling down the chin of Nick Griffin, leader of the British National Party. This was a far-right dream story. Innocent white girls, evil Muslims, a perfect way to sow hatred between white and non-white communities. Idiots all around me nodded like noddy dog and ard. I was very nearly sick. So we are even getting the blame for what these so-called men did because no one would listen to us. We have never said it was a racial crime. It is a crime perpetrated by one religion on many other religions. The targeted girls are often not only white, but never, ever are they Muslim. I spoke to one lady who was there as a social worker and she told me that her mother had told her in Liverpool it was going on in her day, which was around 30 years ago, when the first onrush of Kenyan Asians oiled their way onto our soil. So for you, Norfolk, you are too late. Thanks to you and other multiculturalists, many more girls have had to go through hell because you didn't want to give any credit to the one person and the one political organisation that told the story as it was. It just didn't fit into your mindset that actually most of the time we nationalists have it right. The mere fact that these ghastly crimes were committed mainly by Asians of one sort or another is not down to us, the British National Party. If white members of our party had committed these deeds over the last 30 years on the Muslim youth, how soon would it have been before the so-called authorities did anything? I would say around 60 minutes, give or take a millisecond. When will the media because it is them who have such a deadly influence on life in the UK, actually give us the credit which we deserve. We blew the whistle on this particular nastiness years ago, and no one listened. They thought we were racist. Well, who is the racist now? The Liverpool court who were accused of not having Muslim jurors, or the police who delayed arresting these and other men for years whilst they committed more crimes? The police have apologised to a 15-year-old girl who first accused the ringleader of today's debacle. A 59-year-old guy, not named for various reasons, probably because he owns property around Liverpool and an entire clan, suffice to say. He got away with his actions for four years since she reported him to the police. Racist? No. Anti-white? Yes. Our police never pursued this complaint because this bloke was brown and she was white and it was swept under the carpet. The British powers that be are still sweeping it under the carpet. It is not the fault of the British National Party that these men are doing what they do as part of their culture. It runs in families and extended families. It is not anything to do with honour or marriage within that community. Their wives and their families know about it. They make money from it, along with money from drugs and booze in their shops. It is not about love or sex. It is about power and making money out of people you make dependent on you and your friends and your relations. It is part of the Muslim culture. Get used to it. If you want Muslims in your country, that's the price you will have to pay, regardless of all the court cases and the programs and the committees you form. It is not Eastern European gangs or black pimps. They have their own territory and methods. It is in the heavily populated Muslim enclaves, and all the wittering about the far right and racism will not alter that fact. It has been hidden all these years thanks to social workers, Muslim community workers and the families themselves who are scared of reprisals from the Muslim communities in which they are allowed to remain and the police are frightened stiff of racial conflict. 
Well, if my daughter had been subjected to that treatment, I would not be too inclined towards multiculturalism, would you? I would not turn the other cheek. And I know that we will not, as a people, continue to turn the other cheek and blame the far right for all the ills certain peoples inflict on our children. Wake up, journalists, and start doing your jobs properly, informing people of the right news at the right time, not the crap and biased misinformation that filters through to make headline news. And finally, scientists have come up with an idea of how the planet first warmed up around 80 million years ago by the sauropod dinosaurs breaking wind. Experts have compared it with the methane levels discovered in fossils and compared it with the methane levels given off by farm animals today. Dinosaurs such as Brontosaurus and Diplodocus are to blame for their rich vegetarian eating habits. It is estimated that the gas given off by these dinosaurs alone could run a small country indefinitely. One person commented, With the price of fuel increasing all the time, if we had those sauropods around today, we would be coming up trumps. Oh dear. You have been listening to The World at Eight. I am Lynn Mozart and I wish you all a very good night. <laughs>